I'm here. Hello? Who is it? Securities. One moment, please. Good morning. Progressive Thank you. Securities. Bye bye. A couple more for you. What is this? Eight accounts in three days? Well, we've got the baby now. We're going to need a bigger place, and Marie and I would both like to get a house. How is the baby, by the way? Great. Great. Oh, hey, could you stay late tonight? Mm, I guess so. Somebody's got to keep an eye on you. Thanks, sweetheart. I'll buy you dinner. Yes? I'll be right in. There we go. How's Priscilla? Oh, her appetite's down. Ooh, these little guys are so delicate, you know? Hey, here we go. Back we go. Listen, what's this I hear about you coming to work so early every morning? Well, I get more work done before the office opens than in the whole rest of the day. Oh, I wish I had ten more like you. Andrea, the manager of our Houston office is resigning. I'm recommending you for the job. It's our largest office, you know. Me? Why aren't you taking it? Well, it was felt that I would be of more use if I just stayed put. Oh, Wally. I don't know what to say. Well, it'd be a hundred more a week for a start. That's not too shabby, huh? I, uh, I've moved around a lot in the last few years. And I'm happy here. I have a lovely apartment in a rent-controlled building. <laughs> and I have good friends here. Ah, you'd make friends wherever you are. In all honesty, I'm not 100% sure I can handle it. Think about it. Thanks. Really, I will. Oh, Andrea, there was a call for you before, but when I asked the guy's name, he hung up. Is there somebody new in your life? <laughs> Right home? Uh-huh. After a stop for dog food. Thanks for the help tonight. Thanks for the dinner. Good night. Uh, see you tomorrow. Hi, Teddy. Did 
Did you have a good day, huh? Did you miss mommy? I bet you're hungry. Huh? You hungry? You hungry, baby? Come on. Come on. Let's go have some dinner. Mommy didn't forget about you. No. Why don't you trade that mud in on a decent watchdog? No. Hey, no, hey, hey, no, 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 it's not like that. What do you mean it's not Everything like that? Everything is different now. All these phone calls when no one's there. That's you, isn't it, Leo? You've been hanging around my door. I had to check some things out. You break into my apartment. I have to talk to you now, Andrea. It's all the same, Leo. Nothing is different. Why don't you put on a robe or something so you're not so nervous? What's the matter? Are you afraid I'm going to hurt you? Hmm? Have I ever laid a hand on you? No, Leo. No, and I never will either. I would never do anything to hurt you. I love you, Andrea. I did what you said. I, I went for counseling. I went to the seminars, I read the books. So, what do you think? About what? I don't know what you mean. I'm trying to tell you something. If for crying out loud, you would just listen to me. Okay, okay. Now, I understand you were right to reject me back then. I know now that love isn't something you can just demand from someone because then you're, you're infringing on the space of your co-protagonist. Love, love is something you have to earn. It's like the respect of your supporting egos. You have to learn to have respect for yourself. You have to learn to, to recognize and control the negative mirror image on them. That's the secret to everything, don't you see? I don't know what you want from me, Leo. You can see I've changed, can't you? I've re-educated myself psychologically to be worthy of you. Leo, I'm glad you went for help. But I think you misunderstood me. I didn't promise you anything. Leo? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay, I understand. I saw you with that guy tonight. What guy? There's no guy. Oh, that pretty good-looking guy. That pretty successful-looking guy. It's okay. I know now that I have to earn your respect. And I know just how to do it. You don't have a thing to worry about. What are you gonna do? It's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry I had to drag you out of bed. Will you stop? The police are right. You should have someone staying with you. So who is this freak anyway? Leo Kalb. I dated him a few times back home. He was okay at first. And then I began to see that he was very disturbed. So I tried to break off with him as gracefully as I could. But he would not let go. He's developed this fixation on me. Oh, I had one of those once. I made the mistake of marrying him. He would call my family at 2 o'clock in the morning and say that he had a gun. He was going to come over and rescue me. He'd blame my family for keeping us apart. He put a bomb in their mailbox once. My father nearly lost his hand. Of course, they can never prove that Leo did it. 
So finally, I just gave up. I didn't know what else to do. So I moved to Chicago. But Leo followed me. I went down to the laundry room one night, and there he was. So then it was Detroit. I lived in three different places in Detroit. But Leo always found me. So then when I came here, two and a half years went by. It seemed like he'd finally given up. And now he's here again. I can't believe it. I don't know what to do. I cannot spend my whole life running away from this maniac. That's the fifth body, isn't it? No, the sixth. Isn't that the sixth? Thank God it happened so early in the morning. Do you know I was only a block away? I heard this okay, sound. Okay, folks, I think we've seen all there is to see. Let's go, can we? You say he was trained in demolition in the Army? Yes. Army engineers? Yes. He used to say that someday his training would come in handy. So it appears. Did he ever talk to you about his training, specifically, in detail? No, not really. That's all right. We can, we can get that. Let me ask you this. Did he ever harm you? No, not physically. When I first began seeing Leo back in Springfield, a girl I knew slightly called me to warn me about him. She said he'd beaten her pretty badly. It's one of the reasons I broke off with him. Do you remember the girl's name by any chance? No. I'm sorry, my mind isn't working right. That's all right. You've done just fine. Now, we'll have our people covering you at all times, just in case he tries to get in touch with you again, either by phone or in person. And, Miss McKnight, I think it's very important that you stick to your normal routine, home, office, because, for example, if you were to stop coming to the office, he might suspect that you're working with us. And frankly, you happen to be our best avenue to him. Anyway, we'll have a tap on your phone at home and one right here at all times. We won't let anything happen to you. Thanks. Thanks very much. Okay. Yes? Line two. This is Andrea. So, what do you think? Have you ever seen anything like that before in your life? Huh? You know what it takes to bring down a building Leo, like that? Leo, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to put you on hold for a minute. Don't go away. Lieutenant Walling! 
Lieutenant Walling, it's Leo on line two. Excuse me. Uh, this is Detective Conway. I need a trace. Suspect calling on 555-4335. Uh, five, 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 five. Yeah. Get the phone, but don't punch. Now, punch two on three. One, two, three. Leo, I'm sorry. Are you still there? What are you doing? Put me on hold. Who do you think I am? Some bozo from down the block? You got the police there with you? No, Leo, no. Because I'm trusting you. Do you understand that? You got to go fast. I was just talking with my boss. Look, you're so damn busy. I'll call you back tonight around 10 o'clock. Then maybe you can spare the time. Uh, Leo, wait. Leo! told us it looks like Leo Calvert's working alone. But we're covering every known sicko in the city, just in case he isn't. And his army records are on their way from St. Louis. Now, hopefully, we'll get his ID photos and maybe, maybe some leads through his relatives. And we're checking with motor vehicles. Now, in conjunction with all the downtown security outfits, inspection and surveillance schedules are being set up, just in case there are any buildings that he's already in. Well, we still need to know how many men you want to sign a Hold it now, hold it! Frank? What about the people in Miss McKnight's office? Someone's bound to say something. We emphasize that if it gets out that she's working with us, it could put Miss McKnight in terrible, I mean terrible jeopardy. Frank, why don't you come on up here now? This is Captain Frank Sidney, the commander of the bomb squad. Well, like it or not, gentlemen and ladies, what we're talking about here is a specialist. To do what this man did to this building takes very complex and precise calculations. It would take someone with a thorough knowledge of engineering, construction, and stress analysis. Also, the detonator was probably activated by remote control, so we're talking about someone with a sophisticated knowledge of electronics as well. Simply put, you have explosion and implosion. Now, any amateur can blow something up, a couple of sticks of dynamite. But implosion, that takes an expert. With this kind of specialized knowledge, all that's necessary is to knock out key supports in the superstructure so that the building simply collapsed, fell in on itself, like this. Hold on, I'll give you a test string. That should do it. We're all clear on this end. She understands, and she'll keep quiet about all this. Well, we'll be going now. The phone taps all set. You mean I'm losing you? Lieutenant Eckford will be here soon. He's a good man. He's in charge of what we call a psycho squad. You know, we get a plane hijacker, or some crazy holding hostages in a supermarket. Eckford's the man we call. He's sort of a cross between a <laughs> psychologist and a cop. You'll like him. I know you're trying to reassure me. Why is it I don't feel reassured? You're going to be OK, really. Hello? Excuse me. Oh, hi. Is this your dog? Teddy. Yes, thank you. Where was he? I uh, found him sniffing around down the hall. Oh, thank you. I guess I better shut him in. I'm sorry. I didn't get your name. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, excuse me. May I, I think that's for me. Eifert. Hey, Conway, where you been? Well, I hold with him. You're working for me now. All right, look. What I want you to do, I want you to call all the local TV stations. 
You tell them as soon as the guy who blew the building up today calls them, they should take a message and call us immediately. Right. No, I'm sorry. You're Lieutenant Eckford. That's me. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Miss uh, uh, McKnight. 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 Um, all right, now, basically, the idea is we're expecting Calb to call you. When he does, you and I start working together. I start the tent. Meanwhile, you keep him on the phone over here talking, right? Then I get on the red phone, I initiate the trace so we can tell where he's calling from. That could take anywhere from uh, 30 seconds to 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Maximum. How do I keep him talking for that long a time? Well, basically, you just, um, you know, you be yourself. You take your cue from him. You tell him what he wants to hear. As long as he's getting what he wants from you, he's going to stay on that line. He wants to talk to you. What's wrong, Andrea? I'm, I'm sorry. May I call you Andrea? Um, why don't you sit down? Go ahead, sit down. Sit down. Now, tell me about it. I'm a great listener. I'm scared to death. Okay, now listen to me. I don't think you're in any kind of danger. This character has some very special feelings for you. If he was going to harm you, he could have done that a long time ago. Am I right or am I right? So, no problem. Besides, I'm going to be right here with you. It's good to know. Uh, would you like some licorice? Lieutenant, are you hungry? I thought you'd never ask. <sighs> well, I never would have finished college if it hadn't been for my wife. Uh, she worked the whole time, had a great job. She was a dental, uh, dental assistant. Used to say I had hidden intelligence. Invisible's more like it. Ah, ah, she was my best friend. What can I say? I told you not to worry. I'm right here. Hey, look, if I'm boring you with all this talk about me here, you just uh, be a good sport. Keep it to yourself, okay? I'm sorry. You were talking about your wife. Yeah, yeah, she's... Uh, she died five years ago. Eckford, when? Okay. No, it figures. Okay. Stay in touch. <clears throat> hey, uh, call KLWB. He wants $2 million in an airplane waiting for him at the airport to fly him and a companion to Costa Rica. A companion? Yeah, he's calling himself the love bomber. Cute, huh? He says if we don't give him what he wants, he'll blow another building, that he can blow any building in the city and there's nothing we can do to stop him. Yaddy, 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 yaddy. Is there something about me? I mean, is there something I'm doing that keeps him coming after me? Yeah. You're a nice person. Warm, giving person. Cal Blanks that. Who wouldn't? Um, listen, I hope you won't take this wrong or anything, but you look very tired. Why don't you go to bed? I'll be all right. Sure. If he calls, he calls. We handle it when it happens. All right, then. Good night. Good night. Just, uh, you know, like you were here by yourself.
morning, Dennis. I wish all my people were as prompt as you. Yes, sir. Local Congressman Gene Rondell has promised an investigation. To date, there has been no further word from the Love Bomber, and there has been no indication from authorities as to whether they intend to meet the Love Bomber's demands, outlined in a call from the Love Bomber to this television station yesterday evening. KLBC has learned that early police speculation that the Love Bomber might be working with Confederates has been Lieutenant Tim, 1410. The State Department has also learned... Code 8840, Station 3. Start the chase. Hello? Who is this? Is this the love bomber I'm talking to? Yeah, yeah, that's right. This is the love bomber. Who the hell is this? Uh, I'm sure glad we made contact with one another. This is uh, Lieutenant George Ackford speaking. I just happen to be here at Channel 3. The uh, police department's put me in charge of your case. Uh, listen, you got a name I can call you? I feel a little silly calling you Mr. Love Bomber. Hello? Yeah, yeah, you can call me Leo. Leo, okay, okay, Leo. Hey, listen, uh, I gotta tell you, you have made quite an impact on this city. Yeah, you better believe it. You got my money. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got your money, all right. That's not a problem. Uh, so far, we've had a little trouble finding a pilot who's willing to fly you to Costa Rica, but we're working on it. You've got 24 hours to find one, or I'm gonna gravitize another structure. Gravitize? That's, that's an interesting term. Yeah, well, hey, listen, any idiot can blow up a building. What I do is a specialty. You notice how the building always falls inward? Like water down a drain. The buildings around it aren't even touched. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive, all right. How'd you learn to do that, anyway? Wait a minute, what do you think I was? Born yesterday? Huh? You're just trying to keep me on the phone, aren't you? Uh, no, Leo, wait. Yeah, so you can trace the call. Hey, Leo. You think I am stupid or something? Nothing.
he owed Dennis Calder. Father a surgeon, mother a horsewoman. Alcohol apparently a problem in the home. Kids virtually raised by a series of housekeepers. At the age of 12, he's already in a special school. Does this look like him? He's thinner now, and his hair's longer. There's not much here, except the stuff you already mentioned to us. There's um, Restraining Order 1982, Peace Bond 1983. Yeah, listen to his army record. He uh, beat up a prostitute, Birmingham, Alabama. You near killed her, I guess. Yeah, demotion and a transfer for that. That's back in 77. Um... Uh, you mentioned a, a girl to Lieutenant Walling, a girl you knew back in Springfield. Calvert abused her. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance you can remember her name? She was a cheerleader. I can see her face. I... I'm just drawing a blank. Had him on the line today. Trace nearly completed and I lost him. What does that mean? It means I didn't bag the tiger. Only made him mad. What made you go out with Leo in the first place back there in Springfield? How'd you meet? We worked for the same construction company. He seemed like a nice, presentable guy. Very polite. That's it? Presentable, polite? Well, there was something about him. He seemed so young and so vulnerable. Was he, uh... Affectionate with you, you know, kiss you? No. He never even tried it. He was like a lonely stray dog. I felt kind of sorry for him. Well, you do know how to take care of lonely strays. <laughs> Come on, Teddy. Please, help yourself to anything you want in the refrigerator. Oh, hey, don't worry about me. Marsha Dahlbeck. What? The girl in Springfield. Her name was Marsha Dahlbeck. Oh, great, great. We'll track her down. I want to know why it is that he physically abuses some women. There's a reason he's never done that with you. I'm really glad you're here, Eck. Yeah. Good night.
Everything okay, Dennis? All clear. I'm just heading home. That's fine. You're a good boy, Dennis. Thank you, sir. say black, didn't you? Thank you very much. Good morning, officer. Look, I am trying to do right here, and I realize that you've got a job to do, but look at this. My people aren't coming in. I'm sorry, sir. If you want, you can talk to the lieutenant about it. But you know why we're doing this. I mean, any change in Miss McKnight's routine could make our man nervous. Not half as nervous as it's making me, I'll tell you that much. A million dollar account signed, sealed, and delivered. You're going to be burned out before you're 40. Well, then I better get busy. That only gives me six years. Progressive Securities. One moment, please. Yes? Andrea, line three. Hello, this is Andrea. You working hard? You? How much they pay you in that place, anyway? <laughs> Not very much, I'm afraid. Is this kind of yeah, Start the trace. I don't have any awareness over there. Listen, I want you to meet me. I gotta talk to you. It's important. You mean right now? Right now. Meet me in five minutes in the parking lot where you keep your car. Don't be late. Okay. I'll do my best. KLBD. It's Progressive Securities. He says he's gonna blow the building at 11.30 sharp. That's my building. That's in 15 minutes. The bomb squad there? Oh, they're there. But Leo says he's got the place rigged. That the bomb squad tampers with his stuff. They'll blow the building themselves. This is Lieutenant Russ Walling. Looks street. like he was just trying to get you out of it. You've got everybody else. Okay, don't panic. Take it easy. Come on. Take it easy now. Relax. Everything's Where's going. the elevator? Here in a minute. Here we go. Okay, don't shut. Take it easy. Plenty of room over by the stairs. Take it easy. Don't run. Yes. Yes, for your need. Good. I want to make sure I have your number correct. Church. Uh, yes. Great. No. Sure. Absolutely. I wouldn't tell you otherwise. No, no. 
No, that's my gut feeling about it, yes. Most definitely. For God's sakes, Jerry, come on! Uh, I've got to get out of here. Uh, let me call you later, sir, and I can outline a Jerry, portfolio. let's go! I'll call you this evening, then, sir. I'm sorry, sir, you can't bring that glass in here. Okay, let's go. Thank <laughs> you. 
After the total demolition by the love bomber of the Progressive Securities building, the entire downtown area has been evacuated. All businesses and shops in the area have been closed down, and the streets closed to all traffic except persons connected with vital city services or traveling under special police permits. The National Guard has been sent in by the governor to assist local authorities. In an unprecedented strategy, police have set up helicopter command posts on commercial building rooftops throughout the city in Operation Bomb Watch. Regularly scheduled surveillance flights will fly interlocking grid patterns over the entire downtown district. And still, the tragedy continues to grow. We have a report that the number of fatalities in the Progressive Security Building's explosion has now risen to nine, with the discovery of three more bodies. We, uh... We think he must have been on the inside somehow. Maintenance, security. Some part of the workforce had had legitimate access to the building. All those people dead. <laughs> Friends of mine. I just want to go away. I just want to forget about it and disappear forever. Hey, come on. You're not going to quit on me now, are you? Sooner or later, he's going to have to show himself. He has to. It's his show. It's his parade. When he does, we'll get him, I promise you. Conway, uh... played the tape for me that he made of the, uh, the call that he set up between you and Marsha Dahlbeck. What did you think when she said that Leo would never have anything to do with her, uh, sexually? She was the kind of girl who might challenge him because of that. Maybe make fun of him in some way. Well, now maybe we know why he's so hung up on you. You see, madam, you have what is known as tact. You have 
have feelings for other people. You never challenged him in an area where you knew instinctively he would be insecure. You made him feel good. I know the feeling. Then that's helpful to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's his secret. Once you know a man's secret, you, uh, you then have access to the man. <clears throat> Hello? Andrea! Leo? Hey! So what do you think, huh? Have you been watching TV? Huh? Everything is the love bomber, man. The love bomber this, the love bomber that. You know why I'm using the name love bomber? I'm not sure. Because of you. That's why I'm doing this. It's out of respect for you. You see, I've got a, a long-term goal in mind. It's a positive thing, not a negative thing. That's why it's bound to succeed. You have to keep everything on a positive plane. I see. So, what do you think? How are we doing? Because you don't have to go to work now. I mean, to hell with those people. From now on, I'm taking care of you. I mean, you shouldn't have to work anyway. You're too good for that. <sighs> OK, Leo, but why did you do it? <laughs> they were going to give you the money, weren't they? Are you kidding me? Who told you that anyway? I don't... Those turkeys, man. They think they're dealing with some bozo from down the block. That's why I had to take some positive action. You know? That's why I had to show them who's dealing the cards around here. Well, I'm sure they know now. So, what do you say, huh? Andrea! I'm sorry, Leo. Uh... What's the matter? There's somebody there with you? No. It's just that I've been waiting and waiting to hear from you. I'm so worried. Walling, 8919 Western Boulevard. It's a gas station. Hey, 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 don't worry. You got nothing to worry about. I got everything under control. I know just what I'm doing. Hey, nothing can go wrong this time because you didn't go to the police, you know? I mean, I trusted you. And you helped me, right? Leo? Leo? Bright ideas, I'll let you know. Yeah. They didn't get him. Worse. Now he knows you're in it with us. Emergency, Sergeant Carter. I got a message from Lieutenant Eckford. tracking you down. Where'd you go? Well, after what happened at the building, my daughter asked me to come and stay with her and her family for a few days. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture. I want you to tell me if this man looks familiar to you, maybe even worked for you recently.
take your time. Well, it looks like it could maybe be one of the temporary people I took on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be him. That could be Dennis. Uh, Dennis? Dennis who? Uh, Dennis, um... Dennis, uh... Rutherford, that's right, Dennis Rutherford. You don't think it's him? Well, we don't know. You don't happen to have a... a dress or telephone number on Dennis, do you? Sure, I got a phone number. I gotta be able to get a hold of my people. how nice he was being, don't you? And you notice how miraculously they came up with a pilot for it. Hello? I'm here. Yeah, sure you are. And who's there with you? Eckford? Why don't you say hello to him for me? I'm sorry, Leo. You have every right to be angry with me. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not angry with you. I was never angry with you. I, I know they made you do it. Besides, you're my lady. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. You could kill me if you wanted to, and it wouldn't matter. You probably will someday, huh? I don't want to kill you, Leo. I... Hey, it's OK, it's OK. Look, look, by tomorrow, we're going to be out of here anyway, huh? You just have them give you the money, and you bring it with you in the morning. I'll call you and tell you where. The police will be with me. You know I can't prevent that. Hey, so what? Huh? The more, the merrier. Hey, bring Eckford with you, too. We'll have us a real bon voyage party. I'll call you at 9 o'clock and tell you what to do. Leo? Anything? Just a prefix. Miss McKnight, we used a policewoman in the Sovereign hijacking. Eck, please. Come on, Eck. You know we can't afford to do anything clumsy with this guy. He's just too fine-tuned. You know, of course, Miss McKnight, that it's up to you. You understand, we can't force you to do anything. And nobody can say you haven't done enough already. At first, it was just to keep Leo on the telephone. That's all I had to do. You'd trace a call and pick him up. That didn't work. Now you want me to do this. We've run out of options, Miss McKnight. You're our best hope. Look, I can't pretend that there's no danger, but we've got it under control. We just need you to make the man show himself. Once he does that, we'll get him. You mean kill him. Frankly, we're more interested in protecting you than we are in protecting Cobb. What is it you want to say, Andrew? For the past five years of my life, I don't think there has been a single ring of the telephone or knock on the door where I didn't feel a moment of panic that he found me again. I have spent five years like a fugitive when I haven't broken any laws, running from a man who breaks them all the time. For five years, I have thought of almost Nothing except getting Leo Kalb out of my life. Don't you think I've murdered him a thousand times in my dreams? But to, to have him actually shot dead in front of me because I've led him to a trap? How do I handle a thing like that?
Andrea, you don't have to be involved at all if you don't want to be. Just say no, we'll find another way. I don't want to let you down. What if, uh, what if we made you a promise? What if we gave you our word that Leo will not be harmed unless it is absolutely clear that he intends to kill someone else? All right. I'll do whatever has to be done. Thank you. For what? For giving me the chance to say no. I never wanted you to be a part of this, never. It should all have been over and done with by now, and it would have been to if we'd done our jobs, right? You can't blame yourself. You've done everything. I could never have gotten through to this point without you. Um... Look, when tomorrow is over, uh... That is, I'd, I'd really like to see you again. I mean, that seems like a good idea to you. Eck. If you'd hold me, it would make everything a lot easier. Do you have a picture of her? She's very pretty.
son of a... Get up, would you? Just get up! Get up! Off your butt, soldier! What in the hell is going on here? Well, Sergeant, we were on patrol. Do you know who I am? No, Sergeant. Do you have the slightest idea who I am? No, Sergeant. I'm the Sergeant of the Guard Headquarters Company. Now you get this man straightened up before I get back here. Well, Sergeant, it was kind of hot. Your butt's going to be hot if you don't get this man straightened up. Yes, Sergeant. You straighten up, soldier! <laughs> Thank God he didn't take our names down. Tell me what you want me to do. You got the money? Yes, I have it. Hey, you're going to love Costa Rica. Listen, I guarantee it. Now, let me speak to Eckford. Eckford? Yeah, he's there, isn't he? Yes, he's here. Just a second. Oh, Leo. You got my plane to Costa Rica? Yeah, it's, uh, it's at the airport, runway five. Pilot's there now waiting. You know, I just kind of figured I'd find you hanging around my girlfriend. It's my job, Leo, you know that. Yeah, yeah, and I guess you just got to do it night and day, too, huh? 24-hour watch. So what's the deal, Leo? You come to the first business bank on South Broadway. There are two public phones in the lobby. I'll call you there. I'm waiting for you. Leo? Hey, Eckford! 
I'm up on top of the Marston building. I got myself a hostage. A police helicopter pilot named, what is your name? Larry Sobel. <laughs> His name is Larry Sobel. But now he doesn't seem too happy about it. On the roof of the Marston building, he's got a police chopper pilot up there with him named Sobel. We may have to let the team at the airport get him. How do we know he's going to the airport? That chopper can go anywhere. We're gonna have to take him before he gets off the roof. Andrea, are you sure you're ready for this? All right, let's go. Lieutenant Eckford. Oh, we all. I see everybody came to the party. You, uh... You going somewhere, Leo? Yeah. Larry here is gonna fly us to the airport. Isn't that right, Larry? That's where my plane's waiting. Right. Runway number five. Right. That's right, Leo. You know what happens when I press this button? Uh-huh. This whole building goes down. This building. Huh? Why do you think I ask you all here? Andrea's here. You're here. And so are you, Lieutenant Eckford. So are you. And so is the cream of the police department. By the way, the control unit in the basement's touch sensitive, so you better tell your bomb squad not to mess around with it. And call off your sharpshooters. If I get hit, I press this button by reflex. The same way a dead bee can sting your hand. I said, call off your sharpshooters! Now, please. Captain, call off your men. Do it.
All right. Now I want Andrea over here with me. We're leaving. Found the control unit. That's great. Not so great. This guy knows what he's doing. We got the box off, but there's a mercury switch inside. The slightest touch will set it off. What are you going to do? <laughs> I'm not going to touch it. All right, come on, Andrea. Let's go. It's all right, Eck. Look, you don't have to go anywhere with this lunatic. You got more power over him than you think. You're the only person that never put him down. That's why he keeps coming back to you. He reveres you, probably more than anybody else in the whole world. All right, now I'm going to count to three. What do I say? One. You know his weakness. Use it. Two. Good luck. Tell me, Eck. Will this guy blow himself up with this building, or is he just bluffing? Nah, he's not bluffing. Martyrdom's his long suit. Let's just have a look, see what's inside here. All right. Close up, close up. Come on, come on. Come on. Stop! Cool down. Cool down. What are you doing? I can't go with you, Leo. What are you talking about? I've got two million dollars in there. I arranged it just for you. You can have anything you want. I did everything just for you. Leo, I'm afraid of you. What for? Have I ever laid a hand on you? Huh? No. I talked to Marsha Dahlbeck. <laughs> Marsha Dahlbeck is a slut. It's a terrible thing to make fun of someone to hurt them the way Marsha hurt you. It's a cruel and unfair thing to tell someone that he's not a man, to laugh at him. Shut up! Now you're getting angry at me. See what I mean? You're frightening me again. I'm not going to hurt you. Oh, God, I'd never hurt you. God, I did all this for you. All this? I mean, who else ever in your life has ever done anything like this for you before, huh? 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 I love you. You're the angel of my life. Why are you doing this to me? You know, you know how to understand and listen to all this negativity stuff, you know? I'm not trying to be negative, Leo. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm just telling you the way I feel. I'm so frightened, Leo. I'm so scared. Hold me, Leo. 
Will you hold me? Please hold me. Let's just hold each other. Let's not hurt each other anymore. Let's just hold each other and not hurt anyone else. That's the thing to do. It's okay. It's okay. I've always treasured you. Do you know that? All I ever really wanted to do is to make you happy. I know. Why don't you give that to me, Leo? It would make everyone feel a lot better. You guys get out of here. Go ahead. You sure? Yeah, yeah. You go ahead. Get Sydney out of the basement, too. Okay. Let's go. Helicopter and take off. Nobody's gonna stop you. What do you, what do you think I am? Stupid or something? Huh? You think I'm some bozo from down the block? You just want me out of the way so you can be with her. Leo, Lieutenant Effort just doesn't want anyone else to get hurt, that's all. Please. Shut up! You were special. You're not special. You're no different than all the rest of them. Leo. Shut up now! You don't think I know what you've been doing with this turkey behind my back? You don't think I know? You're not special. You're nothing. Hey, turkey, let me show you something. Huh, you know what this is, turkey? I've been carrying this next to my heart for five years now. Five years now? What a joke that is. You're nothing special. You could have had everything. I'm telling you everything. You know what you are? You're stupid. Don't make me do it, Leo. Now! 